bring to you. And then what we're going to just speak about for a few moments here is, and I, I want to use the word just absolute, absolute, absolute providence of God. And this is one thing that sometimes in our in our lives and our days, and particularly if they're if they're troublesome times, we lose sight of the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is the absolute provider. He he makes provision for everything. And sometimes you might wonder in your life, you know, how little things just came along to help you through this or or, or uh, strengthen you in this. You think, well, you might just think, well, what a coincidence it was that this person I met, or you know, this happened, or somebody, you know, you know, the, you know how that works. And, and I don't, I don't think that it's really coincidental. Lots of times in our in our lives, when we have help from. From the Lord, you know, we don't maybe not think about Him doing that, but that's kind of my thought today is to spend a little time talking about how absolutely providential He is. He's the provider of anything and everything that you would need. Uh, there's a television show that I bumped into. I don't really take the time to watch it, but I've I've seen promos on it and. And, and, you know, I don't know how you guys are when you flip through channels. Do y'all flip through channels a lot? The well, women don't do that. Men do. The men, we just, we're not looking for something to watch. We're looking for something else to watch, aren't we? Women, I mean, they'll hone in on something and just stay right there. But anyhow, I've gone through this flipping the channels and come across this program, and it's called the Shark Tank. Have y'all ever heard it or seen it. And what I understand it to be is all these millionaires that have been so successful in their lives, they have this they have this program and they're looking for people to uh, to 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 you know that have ideas, but money making schemes and ideas. They're looking for uh, people and on this on this television show they bring them in and you have you have several of them. The, the millionaire types, you know, the smart people, the ones that, you know, are, they're the authorities, they know what's going on, they have lots and lots of money. And so these people come on this program, present their, their little company or their business or their idea, and these, these, these shark tankers will, uh, I guess what they do is bid on opportunities to participate or to buy in to this idea or company. And so that's what they do. And I, I saw one the other day where one of the sharks, he said, I'll buy, I'll give you $100,000 for 10% of your company. And the guy, he said, done. Just like that. I mean, he didn't even hesitate. I'll give you $100,000 for a 10% interest in your company, whatever that company was. And the guy was just so happy. I mean, he was just thrilled that he could get a hundred grand for his idea. And then this guy would be a participant with him in the company as a part owner. And so the reason that I went through that little little story is this, that, you know, there are, there are people, there are, there are skilled people that if you have something that you need to get done you don't have the expertise or the skill to do it yourself there are people that you know you might find somewhere that has it they have the money they have the skill they have all the things that you know can make you a success in your life so it goes really without saying that if I could get those people involved in my, in my life, that I would be a whole lot better off for it. And so it's with this thought today that I say, and as I read these verses from Luke, the fifth chapter, the, the, the idea here is the, having Jesus involved, having Him in the mix, 
having him invested, having him as a participant in, in your life. You know, uh, some of the songs that we sung this morning, I was really paying attention to them. Uh, maybe part of the reason is when Marlon came in today, he was visiting with us back there. And he was talking about the songs that we sing here, and even some of the older songs that we have sung in years past, how that they have really wonderful words in the in the lyrics of those songs. And he was saying, you know, how how we don't often really pay attention to the words. We like the music and we sing the words. But then periodically he would say that you'd be singing a song and, and then suddenly the, the words would just kind of step out or 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 reach out to you in the verses of those songs. So this morning, I was just listening to and watching the words of some of the songs that we sung. And that one in particular that Lynn was singing here, since Jesus came into my heart. It, 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 you know, I thought about since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. And, you know, waves of joy on my soul. You know, the billows roll since Jesus came into my heart. And so I began to, and there was another song, and I don't remember exactly which one it, it was, that maybe it was Sweep Over My Soul, Sweet Spirit. But the, 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 the words convey how really in, important and necessary it is for us just in our personal life, our, you know, for the well-being of our soul, for the well-being of our spirit, our bodies, to have somebody that is eternal and powerful that has, honestly, the ability to produce things out of nothing. Have that person involved in your life. You know? And, you know, I thought, you know, Lord, there's just nothing you can't do. <clears throat> he demonstrated it over and over and over again. I mean... Think about this for a moment. <clears throat> this is not part of Luke chapter 5 here, but it is in John chapter 6, and it's just for reference purposes right now. But the Lord took five loaves of bread and two fish, and He blessed them <clears throat> and broke them and distributed out to over 5,000 people in an afternoon. Now you please tell me who but God can do something like this. And I believe that. I believe the registry in John chapter 6 that records that and the other, other of the writers did too about, you know, the Lord in another place He fed. I think this, the, the Bible says there was, uh, was 4,000 that He fed. But, I mean, listen, I mean, God is a provider and He don't need my substance to provide it. He has it all. He has, his, he has it all. And, you know, in, in your life, I mean, I think that just understanding that, number one, will cause you, in any difficult situation you have, will cause you then to look to, to the provider. You know, I mean, honestly, you can, you know, I've observed this in nature, that if you are, if you are feeding your dog at a certain time, in a certain place, in your yard or your or your uh, house, or whatever. I mean, you can condition that animal. I, I remember when I was a kid, Daddy had an old horse there that he bought for us and kept him down in a pasture. And, you know, if it wasn't feeding time for that animal, you couldn't hardly catch it. I, I mean, I would chase, I have chased that old mare all over a 40-acre field through bushes and rubble and stubble, and the longer I would chase, the madder I would get. And she would just stop, turn around, and look at me, and kind of laugh. And say, you're not catching me. And, but I just kept on until I wore myself out, her too. But the reason, I, I, in the winter time, when I started feeding her those all grains, and she knew, that animal knew exactly what time <coughs> and when I was going to show up with a bucket of feed. And she would get there. Condition, amen, to, to be fed. And you know, we're so much like that too as, as people. We, we, have our, we have our lives conditioned to respond or look to 
that which is providing for us. Amen. You know, naturally in our lives, parents, if you're a parent, you've had kids. For a while, I would say from the time a kid is 10, 11 years old, they're pretty much looking to you for things. Now when they hit 12, 13, 14, and 15, some crazy thing happens to kids. I don't know what it is, but they think all of a sudden they don't need your provision. They don't need your guidance. They don't need your instruction. Any amens in here? <laughs> but that's just the way it goes. And so when you understand that, you know, you're not so, you know, caught off guard with it. But the point is still this, is that we, they know, as the old saying goes, they know where their bread's buttered. Right? Because there's somebody in their life making provision for them. And they will return to that. Even, you know, if they drift, they will return to that. And so, church, we need to be conditioned spiritually, mentally. Our whole person needs to be conditioned to turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Because He is the provider. And He, and, and he does it in ways that will absolutely... Uh, you know, to use terms that I hear, blow your mind. Amen. With the way that He can adjust things in your life to, to work for you. Let's look at this in Luke chapter 5 for a minute here this morning. And then I have one other place, Marlon. It'll be in 2 Corinthians tonight, chapter, and then we'll, we'll, I'll be done with my part of this. But Luke chapter 5 says, It came to pass that as the people pressed upon Him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake, and he saw two ships standing by the lake, and the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. He entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he asked him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the <coughs> ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, he said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. For a, that word draught is, is, is a, a, just a, an abundance of, of just you're going to catch more than you can handle. And verse 5 says, Simon answered and said, Master, we have worked and toiled all night and we have taken nothing. We've caught nothing. There have been no fish in this part of the sea. But Peter says, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Just the net. When they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. They beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, and he said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. You know, Peter had enough sense to know, Lord, you're holy, righteous, you're a person that don't need to be associating with somebody like me. But the Lord don't, that's not, that's not part of the equation with the Lord. He knows what you are. And so, verse 9, he says, Peter, he says, For he was astonished, and all that were with him were astonished at the the, the draw of the fish, or the volume of the fish, the number of fish which they had taken. And so was James and John and the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon, that's Peter. And Jesus said unto Simon, He said, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all, and they followed him. And so the, uh, the message here this morning about the provision of God is illustrated so beautifully here because you have these fishermen, Peter, James, and John, and probably some others too there that's not named, fishing and toiling in their livelihood, working all night long, and catching nothing in their nets. And then Jesus comes along and steps into the picture. And he involves himself and they allow him 
to involve himself. And you know, if there's one thing that I would like to have, uh, you know, spiritual sensitivity or discernment to, is to know when it is that the Lord is attempting to involve himself in my, my life. To know that. And then knowing that to allow him just to use my boat or to allow him to teach or allow him to whatever it is that he is up to at the time for me to know that he is extending to me his, his grace so that when I accept it, then wonderful things happen to me. All of a sudden, I'm not fishing all night. I'm just simply pushing my boat out at, at the word of the Lord, dropping a net down, and where did the fish come from? I'm just saying to you that the fish responded to something in the provider named Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus the provider. Everything in creation, whether it's in heaven or earth or the land, responds to the Creator's voice or the Creator's will. And that's what Jesus is. He's the Creator of everything. Even in your life when it looks like you can't see, you cannot imagine how things will work out. The Lord can work them out. It's just simply letting Him involve Himself in your life. And knowing when it is that He is, he is extending Himself to you to make that provision. Now, the fishermen that were fishing really had nothing to do with that. Except in that they push their boat back out, and they drop the net down into the water. That's what they did. They controlled nothing of the atmosphere, nothing in the water. And in, in fact, I think the, the, the uh, uh, wisdom for them at the time was we fish at night when fish, you know, can just come into your net and not be distracted or scattered by it. They, in the daytime hours with the sun up, Fish are not coming into a net. But you see, when Jesus speaks a word, it doesn't matter what time of the day it is or night it is or what the conditions are. The creation responds and the fish fill the nets, fill every net, initially just one net, but the partners came and dropped a lot of nets. They filled this boat, almost sinking, filled another boat, almost sunk it, and they just, the scripture says, they were astonished at what the Lord did. <clears throat> now, when this is all said and done, the Lord, in verse number 10, He says this, Don't be afraid. Fear not. And, you know, I don't know necessarily why, if I could analyze this and tell you why the predominant spiritual, the, the, the predominant spiritual thing that we have to deal with in our lives is fear. We're afraid of this. We're tormented by fear. That's what the Bible says. John said fear has torment. So what we do in our minds, we just let that spirit of fear dominate our lives. Well, we're not going to have enough. You know, we're going to run out. What am I going to do if this happens? I'm going to worry about this. I'm going to worry about that. And that's, that's the nature of of the natural man. But the Lord says, I want to override all that natural junk that you, you're having to deal with. Look to me. I'm the provider. And I have more than you could ever need. He says, I'll provide it for you, but what you have to do is let me in. Yeah. Let me in. Let me participate with me. Let me be a partner with you. You know, the Lord, if you'll go to Revelations, the third chapter, and you'll see the, the last picture you see of Him after seven messages to seven churches. There in the book of second and third chapter of Revelations, the last image that John paints of the Lord there is, well, in that, in that third chapter. You see Jesus standing at the door, knocking. And it says, whoever will open the door and let Him in. The Lord says, I will come in, I will come in, and I will sup with you, I will converse with you, I'll talk with you, and we'll have, we'll, have, we'll have communion together. We'll, have, we'll join our spirits together. And that's, that's the Lord 
And this whole message of the church and this age that we're living in. And to never lose sight of the fact that the Lord wants to come in, but He's not pushy. He's not, He is a provider. But for some reason or the other, He has said to you and to me, I'm going to let you control this. I'm going to let you do it. You can keep me out or you can have me in. Now, the last part of this little thing here in 11, and I'm not <coughs> going to get to 2 Corinthians, Marla, because I'm, I'm out of time here if that clock's right. But <clears throat> verse 10, he said, Fear not. <clears throat> he said, From henceforth thou shalt catch men. And it was that scripture right there, that or that part of that scripture right there that got me to thinking and studying along on this line to share with y'all this morning. Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And, you know, I think, well, Lord, <clears throat> that's nice, but men just are not easy to catch. I mean, you can't just go out and exert you know, your will over another person's will and catch them. Lord, you have to be the one. You see, just like Jesus did with the fish, those fishermen simply obeyed a command. What really wasn't a command. It was just, if you will do this, if you will put your boat back out there and drop a net down, I will fill it with fish. You will get a boatload of fish. So when it comes to fishing for men, when it comes to gathering in men, you may labor, and you may toil, and you may witness and testify and demonstrate all the skills that you have as a, as a gospel presenter or something, and you just think, well... This is fruitless. There's nothing happening. There's no, and I'll use the word, and there's no fish being caught. There's no men being caught. But listen, the Lord has to be the one who, did, who brings the fish into the net. And just like the fish into the net, the Lord has to be the one who causes the people that you're going to catch to come into the net. All that He says for you to do is to preach this Word. And it's a, it's a good Word. Church, the Gospel of Jesus Christ is really an uplifting, encouraging, blessed Word. Amen. Amen. And unfortunately, sometimes you know people use it as a hammer and to, 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 you know, to, beat, to kind of beat you up. But it's not that at all. Amen. Jesus came, amen, to show us to be a demonstrator, number one, of his, of his providence. You know, one of the things that I love is what he told Peter one time. He said when Peter, at the end of his ministry, he told Peter, he said, Peter, you know, I prayed for you that the devil, that your faith won't fail you not. He said, because Satan has desired to have you. Satan wants you. And what he wants to do with you is to, the terminology there was to sift you. To just basically drain you of everything that you are. He said, but I pray for you that your faith will not fail you. And you know, on the heels of that, Jesus told him, he said, you know what? He said, I, I'm not ever going to leave you. I'm going to stay with you. I'll follow you wherever you go. Even if it means my death, I'll go with you. You know what the Lord in His providential manner turned and said to Peter? He said, Peter, it would really be nice if you knew what you were talking about. And he didn't say that. I added that. But he said, you know, before the rooster crows tonight, you will have denied me three times. And you know what? As you read on through that, you see where Peter got himself into some tight spots in the night. And people were coming to him saying, hey, I know who you are. You're, 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 a, you're a disciple of Jesus, who at that time was just a, a little bit away in the hall of judgment there in the night. And they were, they were mocking him, slapping him, spitting him, crowning him with thorns. And Peter denied once. He denied twice. 
and he denied the third time, and when he did, the rooster crowed. It's providential. Jesus said, you will do it three times, the rooster will crow, and then you'll know. You'll know who's in charge. In church, I believe the Lord <coughs> Jesus can cause the rooster to crow when he needs to crow, or he can shut the rooster up when he needs to be quiet. But the, the point is here that the Lord is the provider. He's the provider. Now, I, I told you I'm not going to go to 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. You can do that on your own. But if you'll go over there and read that, you will see how it is that you can get the Lord involved big time into your affairs. Okay? Make a note of that. 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. We'll do it for you. And all right, I'm done with this. Let's see. Um, who do we need to get to see?